This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, the other day it was trains, now it's planes. GM is partnering with a German-Swiss company, Liebherr, to make fuel cells for aircraft. Liebherr makes aircraft components, and it will use GM's fuel cell called Hydrotech. It will be developed at a Liebherr lab in France. Earlier this week, GM formed a partnership with Wabtech to develop fuel cells for trains. And Bosch will supply a joint venture between Daimler Trucks and Volvo Truck with fuel cell components. That includes electric air compressors with integrated power electronics. The compressors govern the fuel cell system's oxygen supply. These compressors are part of the whole system that are used in heavy trucks or stationary units that generate electricity and heat. Bosch will mass produce the compressors by the middle of the decade. It's making a big bet on fuel cells and is investing 1 billion euros between now and 2024. The Chinese and the U.S. government are taking action to address the chip shortage that is crippling automotive production. China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology laid out its five-year plan that ends in 2025. It wants China to develop world-class companies that make semiconductors and integrated circuits. It also wants the transportation, electronic communications, internet, and car companies to collaborate on 5G V to X connected vehicles. Meanwhile, in the U.S., a group of Democrat and Republican senators proposed a 25% tax credit for companies that make chips in the U.S. Last week, the Senate approved $52 billion for production and research on semiconductors, including $2 billion specifically for the automotive industry. The Commerce Department expects these moves to create 7 to 10 new chip plants in the U.S. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Back in April, Volvo Trucks partnered with Swedish steelmaker SSAB to make trucks using fossil-free steel. Now Volvo Cars wants to do it too. The steel is made by replacing coking coal with fossil-free electricity and hydrogen, which leaves virtually no carbon footprint. Volvo will use the steel for testing purposes and maybe a concept car. By 2026, SSAB hopes to have it ready for commercial scale, and Volvo wants to be the first to use it in production. There's a big push in Europe to produce metals that are CO2-free. Audi, BMW, and Mercedes plan to use sustainable steel and aluminum. Motor racing is one of the best ways to develop new technology. That's why Scheffler is turning to the German DTM Racing Series to test out its drive-by-wire system. It's installing it in an Audi R8 LMS GT3, a Mercedes AMG, and a BMW M6 GT3. Scheffler calls it Space Drive, and there is no steering column in these cars. All the steering inputs are transmitted as digital signals. And this is all about getting ready for autonomous cars. Scheffler predicts that by 2035, about one in three vehicles on the road will have some degree of autonomy. And it says motor racing provides the most extreme conditions to prove that drive-by wire works. Autonomous cars keep making impressive improvements. In China, Baidu is going to launch 1,000 level four robo-taxis over the next three years. BAIC is going to make the electric cars under its ArcFox brand, and the model is called Apollo Moon. Most impressively, the cars will cost 480,000 RMB, which is about $75,000. Baidu claims that's about one-third the cost of other level four AVs. It expects the cars to have a five-year life cycle. So our simple back-of-the-envelope calculations say that it would take about $41 a day in ride fares to pay for the car. 
Baidu Apollo is already offering robo-taxi ride hailing in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Chongqi, and other cities. And it claims it's becoming a dominant force in autonomous driving. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. One hurdle for EV adoption from commercial vehicle operators is making sure they can charge up their fleets every day. So Ford is acquiring Electrify, a California company that's developed software for charging management and fleet monitoring of electric vehicles. Ford will integrate the technology into Ford Pro, a new global business to help develop charging and energy management experiences for commercial customers. The acquisition is part of Ford's $30 billion investment by 2025 in electric vehicles. The other day we ran a story about how environmental group Transport and Environment called out several European automakers, including Daimler, for not having, quote, ambitious phase-out targets for ICEs. Well, now we're seeing some action from the German automaker. Manager Magazine reports EVs that were scheduled to come out in 2024 or 2025 will be moved up a year and that their ICE counterparts will be dropped from the lineup. An official announcement could come before the end of summer. Meanwhile, Audi is going to take an ax to its internal combustion engines. From 2026, it will no longer introduce any new gasoline or diesel cars, not even hybrids. Audi will keep on building the engines it makes, but won't introduce any new ones. We figure that in another design cycle or so, sometime in the early 2030s, Audi will no longer sell ICEs. Speaking of the move to EVs, Mazda laid out its plans through 2030. Starting next year through 2025, that includes five hybrids, five plug-in hybrids, and three EVs. We suspect those are the same five models with three different powertrains, with the hybrid being supplied by Toyota. Then Mazda will use a new scalable EV architecture to come out with several models of various sizes and body types between 2025 and 2030. It figures that by 2030, BEVs will make up a quarter of its sales. Interestingly, it also says it will come out with a new inline six-cylinder engine, but didn't provide any details. And before we wrap up, viewer Phil pointed out we made a mistake in yesterday's show. We said the ID4 is made at VW's plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee. While there are plans to start making the EV there next year, the ID4 is currently produced in Germany. Thanks for catching that, Phil. Anyway, that wraps up this week's worth of shows. I hope you have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. And by Scheffler. We pioneer motion. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.